Hello and welcome back to The Drag Detective. I have put my Spotify wrapped playlist on pause to record this and I've spent a little bit of time reflecting on UK4 before making this video because I genuinely was like sitting down to write the script and I was like, I, I feel like that was a fever dream. Like, I don't even know how I feel feel or like what I feel. So before I like wrote a whole script, I was like, let me reflect. We've reflected and we're ready to do the riggery of Drag Race UK4. In my eyes, I think UK4 had a big job to do after coming off of two top tier seasons in the first and second seasons of UK. Drag Race UK3 was in my opinion, a huge disappointment with like all the nonsensical twists almost every week, the mistreatment of so many fan favorites like Charity Case and River Medway and Cheriza May, a controversial winner, and the worst knock against it, it was nowhere near as good as UK2. Also, I have a canker sore and it hurts so <laughs> fucking bad. <laughs> So, sorry if my speech is a little bit slurred in this video. I'm trying to, like, not move my lips as much as I possibly can. But, um, okay, back when a series has as much momentum like Drag Race UK did after Series 2, I said series, I know what the UK, I know their lingo, I know their jargon, um, you, you have to stick the landing. And unfortunately, I think UK3 was a big miss. Now, with less pressure on them, you know, not coming off of, like, the biggest season ever, I was hoping UK4 would be a bit more back to basics, lose all of the weird twists, and just give us, like, a solid season like the first two were. And I can say that they succeeded in going back to basics, but can I say that UK4 is a good season? And I'm kind of left just saying, meh? I don't think it is. I think that my biggest issue with this season is it felt devoid of any life. The judges and the producers felt like they were just going through the motions. The editors gave us the bare minimum when it came to storytelling. Everyone involved in this season, besides the queens themselves, felt like they were on autopilot. And I feel that way about a lot of drag race seasons that aren't the main series, like regular Drag Race. All-Star 7, Autopilot. Drag Race Down Under, 1, I haven't seen 2. Autopilot, UK4, Autopilot. I feel like doing so many seasons a year, RuPaul, you know, led seasons a year, it kind of is getting draining. <laughs> like, it seems like they're tired. <laughs> you know what I mean? It seems like they are so overworked and tired that they just don't put as much effort in to crafting a great season like they used to. And I, I kind of feel like Goldilocks. Like, this is too messy. This is too boring. This is just right. But like, I do feel like Drag Race has a sweet spot in UK2, UK1, Season 14, season 12, like, All-Star 6, those hit that sweet spot. UK4 did not hit that sweet spot. If UK3 was too messy, UK4 was too boring. I am going to save most of my thoughts, like, overarching for an upcoming video that I want to do where I'm going to look at the biggest problems structurally with Drag Race UK. So look for that before, probably before the end of the year. But in this video, we're specifically going to be talking about the riggery of UK4. And boy, there was a lot of it. <laughs> If you haven't listened to my patron podcast I did with Bootsy covering this season, then you probably aren't aware of my thoughts overall about what has been transpiring. I really liked it in the beginning, but then after episode five, The Rusical, I really feel like it just fell off. And this is also when I feel like most of the riggery started coming into play. Bootsy and I talked about how Nobody cares if the riggery is helping along their favorites or hindering their least favorites. The only time the fandom really brings up the riggery is when it's negatively affecting their favorite queen. And in this season, Dakota, Baby, and LaPhil were all fan favorites who were all negatively affected by riggery. 
And so the discussion about the riggery on the season was rampant all over Twitter and all over Reddit. So it's kind of been nice to just kind of like take a step back, go episode by episode, determine what what is rigged, what isn't rigged. And, and I feel like I have objectively done that. <laughs> I feel this is like as, as objective as it gets. Starting off, let's just get right into it. With episode one, this is the UK's classic runway premiere challenge. This season, they had to do two looks, one referencing the BBC and a second look that shows off their unique drag style. It's basically, who are you? Tell us who you are in one look. I genuinely love having this runway challenge as the UK's premiere since it gives us a glimpse into the Queen's aesthetic and what they're going to bring to the table and it doesn't eat up half of the episode's runtime so more time can be distributed to things like entrances and workroom stuff and then the challenge is just like this little portion towards the end of the episode. I I genuinely like this format a lot. And this is somewhat of a harder challenge to judge, though, because taste is subjective, and what one person might love in a look, somebody else might hate. I remember seeing people's personal placements for this episode on Twitter, and they were literally all over the place. So for this challenge, I definitely was way more lenient in considering anything rigged. The one placement I really just did not see And I saw other people on social media discussing this as well, so I felt kind of justified in this was Miss Copper Top. Let's talk about Miss Copper. So watching her in the Meet the Queens, she gave me winter vibes, like fully. Touch my bum, this is life. (laughs) My career highlight so far, I am the face of a famous bingo brand. But now, she's on Drag Race, honey. Stada Lenge. Yeah, yeah, sweetheart. (laughs) She had so much energy, so much charisma, I was so excited to watch her on the show, but then right off the bat, she gets the kind of underwhelming quiet edit, and unfortunately, this leaked into the fandom's perception of her, with a lot of people on Twitter kind of writing her off before the first episode had even finished airing. Production was out to get Copper from day one. I'm convinced of that. Here we have her two looks. Her Julie Walters look. It is so fun. It is so camp. I think it is one of the best of that category. Her orange look, sure, it does look a little bit DIY, but the message behind it, I think, carries this look and takes it to a higher level. The runway's asking, who are you? And she's putting it all out on the table right off the bat. It was her critiques that I actually thought were rigged. If the judges had said, hey, your first look was great, but this second look is kind of crafty looking, I could at least accept that. But instead, most of the critiques focused on her first look and how her presentation of it was one note. And that just made my eyes roll immediately. The queens get, what, maybe four minutes on the main stage to perform their looks. They do it twice, probably get like two minutes, maybe three minutes for each one. And it's like a silent performance. It's not like they're talking or anything. So when Michelle is asking for like peaks and valleys in a runway performance, I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Like when it's edited down, we see maybe 30 to 40 seconds of them on the runway. There literally is not enough time or opportunity to give an Oscar worthy performance with like an arc to it, Michelle. (laughs) And then Rue is like saying, The presentation wasn't great. I was like, what are we doing here, guys? She knew her character. She played her character on the runway. It was a campy, fun runway performance. You can be critiqued for being too small on the runway, but then when Copper goes big and fun and camp, they're like, "Mm, it's one note. I truly was left scratching my head at those critiques. To me personally, that first look, the way she performed it on the runway, her makeup, and the message behind her second look, I thought was enough to make her safe. But this was sort of the beginning of the end for Miss Copper. I think Copper unfortunately ran into the issue of there being other queens on this cast eating her lunch. Or more so, all of them eating the same lunch. <laughs> Pixie and Danny are both campy comedy queens just like Copper, and unfortunately for Copper, came in together with a built-in storyline. 
Pixie and Danny are friends. There's kind of a friendly rivalry there. So Copper is kind of left in the cold with no storyline other than being quiet. And two queens who are a bit louder, more boisterous than her, can kind of fill in the gaps where Copper would fill in, if that makes sense. By the critiques in this episode and what we will see later, I really think production was never going to let Copper make it very far into the competition. But let's put this storyline on ice for a second, come back to it a little bit later. Because we have to talk about Black Peppa. Wow, did she come into this season with so much momentum. And wow, did we watch all of it diminish episode by episode. It was so sad going back to this premiere and seeing how much star power she does have. I mean, the fandom was so obsessed with her preseason. I think only Cheddar had as much hype behind them as Peppa did. And Peppa met every expectation given to her in this first episode, from the iconic entrance look and the photo shoot to the runways and the confessionals, she ate this entire episode up. I really just wish she had been able to keep this momentum going and apply the everything she applied to this episode, apply that to every challenge moving forward, because we're going to see that is not the case for Black Peppa. Sminty and Starlet both had some next level looks in this challenge, but Peppa had the performance and the charisma in her runway that really shot her to the top of this episode. But unfortunately, she will not have another week in the top for the rest of the season after this, which is like just wild. So let's look at the bottom two. We have Just May and Dakota Schiffer. I'm going to be real here for a second. You bitches on Twitter got me dangerously close to not liking Dakota because of how hard you were riding her butt this episode. It's fine because she became my favorite of the season, like of all of them. But Miss Girl 1000% deserved the bottom two this episode. And the fact that so many people were saying it was bogus and it was rigged just proves that skinny pretty privilege is alive and well. But we can break it down. So for her BBC look, she's doing this nun. I actually don't mind this look much, except for the fact that it is an exact copy of her entrance look, just in a different color scheme. I love the wig. I think that there were a lot of nice details. I just really was underwhelmed because we had literally just seen this exact outfit for her entrance. For her Who Are You look... That's what really sealed the deal for me, for her to be in the bottom two. It's just too basic. I appreciate that it's a different silhouette, but for me, there were so many high concept looks in this category that told me so much more about the queen. I know that people wanted Pixie Polite in the bottom two, but her first look was fun, camp, she performed it well. And her second look, while it did veer into the crafty side, I think it did a much better job of showing us who Pixie was than Dakota does with this look. And that's the real crux of this challenge. So D Dakota stands, don't click off. I promise for the rest of this video, I'll be doing nothing but singing her praises and calling her a robbed goddess. But she has had the opposite of Black Peppa, where the first episode was rough, and then the rest of the season she annihilated. We say goodbye to Just May, and as much as I fell in love with her personality this episode with her confessionals and getting to hear her struggles, she showed so much personality and emotion in this one episode alone, but when it came to the looks, they just didn't stack up. So let's move on to episode two, the girl group challenge. Girl, what the fuck? <laughs> I know this is like UK's signature challenge, but do we need to do it like right off the bat? I think it works so much better with less queens. This episode was so overwhelming. Trying to watch every queen in the performances was basically impossible. I had to like rewind and watch multiple times just to like watch each queen <laughs> individually. It was so much. Like, Six queens on a team, six queens all getting a win and a badge. Uh, yeah, it, it was just a lot. I also didn't like how there was no mini challenge to determine team captains. With 11 queens left, there are still a lot of them kind of left out of the main focus of the edit. 
and allowing for some new faces to like win the mini challenge, get the storylines pertaining to them being team captains, I think is always a good way to flesh out more of the queens early on. But instead, Dakota and Peppa are the captains because Peppa won and Dakota was in the bottom the previous episode. And then neither of them really have a storyline from this that goes anywhere. Dakota does step up to the plate. She is a good leader. She wins the challenge, but she wins it next to five other queens. So none of them really stand out as like a clear winner or a front runner, especially since they don't get critiqued. They're just like, you win, goodbye. And then despite being the team captain, Peppa is the least visible in this episode from her team. We see Sminty and Starlet and Jambers all struggle. We see Baby kind of being the backbone of the team. Peppa is just there. And it seems like a missed opportunity to me from a storytelling perspective to not focus really on Dakota or Peppa on the episode. I don't have that listed. I don't have anything listed as rigged here because like all six of them winning was obviously like they were the best team, but like six winners, like either pick one from the team and make everyone else high or just don't have it be judged in teams, like give the win to baby. You know what I mean? Like there were so many other ways I think you could have judged this that would have made it seem better or like wait until the final eight like you normally do like there were just so many better ways to do this episode I was left kind of disappointed not by the performances just by the way it was all handled but there's no riggery there could be an argument I guess for Sminty to be in the bottom over Jombers but they both missed lyrics they both had bad runways I do think Sminty stood out a bit more in the performance and had a slightly better runway than Jombers so I wasn't seeing clear riggery here we do lose Starlet and I'm sorry that moment <laughs> They're like Sminty is crying because she flopped and Baby is like pissed that she isn't going to win the challenge now because everyone else flopped. And Starlet literally like unprompted is just like, I slayed that. I did so well. I was like, what? I gasped. I was like, oh my gosh. It's just, it was so funny to me. Star Starlet is like, she's not like actively funny, but I think she's like underratedly funny. Like, I don't think she's trying, but the things that she says, I'm like, <laughs> On my Patreon, I did like a preseason expectations video and I kind of nailed Starlet on the head. I, I said that I thought she would struggle with opening up and being more than pretty. Now, let's be fair. She is a little bit goofy, but not goofy enough to outlast some of these other powerhouses on the season. So her leaving here, it felt correct. And at least she looked stunning on the way out. Episode three, the duo design challenge, but we do get a mini challenge this episode and it kind of just lays out the rest of the season, doesn't it? It's the NAFTA awards the queens all vote for different categories. Copper Top wins best supporting actress. Then she gets booted 30 minutes later. Baby wins resting on pretty and she gets thrown in the bottom for every other challenge that involves anything other than being pretty. Danny Beard wins camera hog, dominates the entire second half of the season. Sminty wins hot mess this entire episode. She's a disaster and flames out in the next episode. Black Peppa wins biggest star. Makes sense at this point, but we do see that star start to dim starting in this episode. So just kind of interesting how, you know, I definitely think the production saw some inspiration <laughs> for some storylines from whoever won those awards. But the challenge itself, the queens have to make design looks that belong in the same collection. We've seen stuff like this before. And like, damn, if there was ever a challenge to judge in teams, this is it. They have to conceptualize the looks together. They have to make sure they match. They have to, I'm sure, help each other with both of their looks. Surely this will be 100% judged in the pairs that they were split into, right? No, wrong. <laughs> this episode left me at a loss. Tell me you want Copper Top gone before three comedy-based challenges in a row without telling me you want Copper Top gone before three comedy-based challenges in a row. That's what I got from this episode. There was no reason for John Burr's Blonde to not be in the bottom two here. 
The wig didn't go with the look. Half of the look was just a piece of fabric wrapped around her waist. The bottom of the skirt was a jagged mess. The top had issues. Her and Peppa were both a mess in this challenge, and they did it together. Like, they were on the same sinking ship. Now, Copper was not great either. Don't get me wrong. The gold leaf on her face was a little bit weird. The shape of the wig was a little off. The cut of the bodysuit was too low. But at least she had a concept, and parts of the outfit worked. And to be completely honest, her and Cheddar should have been safe. If we were judging in pairs, that means Cheddar's amazing look brings their average up, at least up above Danny and Pixie. They called Copper's look basic. Danny and Pixie are wearing the exact same dress that I'm sure one of them just brought a template for that they could just whip up. And it's supposed to be two looks that belong to the same collection. That doesn't mean both of you wear the exact same look. This was... 1000% low to me. Copper and Cheddar, safe. Jombers and Peppa, bottom two. But I truly think after Copper was named the background character of the season, production obviously wasn't going to be pushing her, especially after that low placement in episode one. I really think they just wanted her gone before these comedy challenges come up, these performance-based challenges come up where she would really shine, I think. And this was the one chance because... Next, you have Improv, then a Comedic Rusical, then Snatch Game, all back to back to back. And I have no doubt Copper would have done solid, if not great, in all of them. And skated then to the end game of the season. Maybe that's a hot take, but by watching her meet the queens, by watching her on social media and in the confessional, she did have all the charisma and the comedy chops it takes to do well in those challenges. I do think Copper's one weakness was in the looks department. So you got to get her out on a look challenge, which is what they did here. And why else do you judge the entire challenge in pairs? Two queens from the same pair win. Two queens are high, two queens are safe, all from the same pairs. And then you split up the bottom two pairs, putting Copper in the bottom over Jombers. Them trying to get rid of Copper before she has a chance to shine is really the only thing that makes sense to me here. We've talked a lot about Copper. Let's talk about Miss John Burr's blonde for a second. I was floored. I was literally gasping for air when I found out her original drag name was John Benet Blonde. <laughs> like, probably smart to change that before going on TV. But I'll be completely honest. I didn't get why John Burr's was still there for a lot of the season. She was not my personal cup of tea. And reminder, you don't have to love every single queen on your television. That doesn't give you the right to tag them in hate all over social media. I'm sure Jombers is a lovely human being, but for most of the season, I just did not resonate with her. I had no attachment to her. But by the end of the season, I would say mostly in those last two episodes, I fully fell in love with Jombers. I genuinely love her now, but I don't know what it was. Most of the season, I just did not vibe with John Burr's. It didn't click together for me until Pixie points it out in the makeover. I don't think John Burr's had as developed a drag persona as a lot of the other queens on the season. She said she's a fashion queen, but a lot of her fashions from the first half of the competition just did not resonate with me whatsoever. So I feel like I didn't know who Jombers was until the tail end of the season. And whether that's because of how they edited her or she just wasn't showing herself well to the cameras, I don't know. But I do know that I'm not alone in feeling this way. And I think it shows a bigger problem with production on UK. I want to get into this way more in my, you know, general UK video I mentioned, but I don't think production is good at determining which queens will resonate with fans. Queens like Dakota and Baby were given unfair placements, while queens like Jombers were being pushed when it came to their placements. Like I said, no one cares about riggery when it's benefiting their favorite. And unfortunately, most of the riggery in UK seasons benefit queens that don't resonate with fans. And I think that is what happened with Jombers here. 
we lose Copper, but Baby and Dakota both get a really solid moment in the spotlight here. Same with LaFille and Sminty. All four of them served amazing looks, with LaFille and Dakota giving some of my favorite design looks of all time. What is sad, though, is this is LaFille's biggest episode storyline-wise, and it's all just so that he can cater to someone else's storyline. Sminty wins Biggest Mess Award in the mini challenge and then lives up to the name literally 10 seconds later by being literally a disaster this entire episode. We see LaFille really be Sminty's support, helping her through her stress and just kind of being a good friend and partner. And it's sad because LaFille basically fades into the background of almost every other episode, never getting a storyline that really focuses on themselves. Despite really not getting much storyline, LaFille resonated with the audience, and it would have been nice to hear a discussion about maybe their pronouns and how they identify, or get to know much about them at all. But outside of one conversation about his hair, LaFille really is LaFiller when it comes to screen time on this season. Episode 4 is the Caddy Man Improv Challenge, and I don't think anything was rigged, but we can still talk about the storylines woven into this episode. This is, I think, the strongest episode of the season because there was a clear narrative behind it, and several storylines that we've kind of been following these first four episodes all get some payoff here. And after this episode, there's basically no storylines anymore. So this was the peak of UK4, in my opinion. This and, and the next episode, the Rusical. So this is the big culmination of the Danny Pixie storyline, which is weird to say because it's also like the first episode it really pops up. But this is one of the most poorly handled storylines in all of Drag Race. I'm just going to say that. Back in the premiere, Pixie tells us that her and Danny are friends, but that Danny beat her in a pageant. So there's definitely some friendly competition going on. And then in the first three episodes, their arcs have been very closely aligned, but not really focused on. They were both safe in episode one. They both won episode two together on the same team. And then they were partners in episode three, and they were safe again. Now, Pixie wins the mini challenge and gets to choose her team for the improv challenge. She chooses Danny right off the bat. So this kind of sets them up as friendly rivals. And that would be a very fun storyline for the second half of the season, except it's basically never focused on again. <laughs> Danny and Pixie both do amazing in this episode. They are very clearly the top two. Good challenge, good runways. Feasibly, the win could go to either, and I would have been, like, fine with it. Make it a double win, would have been fine with it. But Danny wins, makes sense, and Pixie is kind of given the bitter arc moving forward. She starts to give up, and Danny is there for her when she can be. But it really just sends this storyline into a tailspin. Now, from a storytelling perspective and a production perspective, it would have been a great arc for Pixie to get the win here and then Danny to get the win in the next episode. And their competitiveness between each other would then really hike into overdrive going into the last couple of episodes. But because Danny just wins, 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 Pixie left in the cold, left in the cold, left in the cold. All it does is drag Pixie's self-esteem down and any competitiveness between the two is kind of just diminished. The storyline just turns into Pixie is basically Danny's shadow. That's the takeaway from this episode and the next. And we see it harked on later on in the season, which we can discuss when we get there. Pixie got a lot of hate from the fandom because of, you know, fat phobia. But I was a Pixie stan from literally day one. Her Meet the Queens was so good. She was a standout in the girl groups. It was really sad to see her believe less and less in herself as the season went on. I really think she could come back for like a UK All-Stars and kill it because she had the best makeup of the season, some of the coolest runways of the season. The other storyline happening here with the improv challenge is with Dakota, who is kind of doubting herself as a comedic person. She isn't sure how she's going to do in this improv challenge. 
And we kind of have this directly contrasted with Black Peppa, who also is kind of in her head saying, I'm not funny. I'm not sure how this is going to go. Neither of them think that they're going to do a good job. The difference between the two that sets them apart is that Dakota puts her all into these comedic challenges and she succeeds. She's funny in this challenge. She's super funny in the Snatch Game. On the other hand, Peppa is hard on herself. She never believes she can actually do it. And because of that, she ends up in the bottom for almost every comedy challenge besides this one. I wish that dynamic between these two queens was focused on a little more because it's genuinely interesting to me how two different approaches got drastically different results. Sminty Drop goes home here, which is valid, but still very sad. Her, LaPhil, and Baby are like very clearly the bottom three, but LaPhil having one of the best runways of the episode, I think saves them from the bottom. And Baby's, you know, she won the award for serving pretty. That destiny given to her by the NAFTA award is starting to come into fruition. We go into the Rusical episode next, which I think we all can agree should have been a top two instead of a bottom two. Considering the only double Shantae worthy lip sync in the entire season happens in this episode anyways. Just make it a top two and then cut the double save later in the season. Pixie, LaPhil, Baby, Danny, and Jombers all absolutely slayed their roles in this rusical, with LaPhil and Danny having two of the best runways of the entire season in this episode. That's top two material right there. As for the other queens, Dakota and Peppa both did well in the rusical, but their parts were a little less like fun and wacky. There wasn't as much to do with them. So I think it was harder for them to stand out. Peppa did do better than Dakota, but both of them were fine. They were solid. The only queen who I truly think did not excel in this challenge was Cheddar Gorgeous. Now don't attack me. Let's hear me out first. A big part of this role was the accent. That was literally how Cheddar got the part. She had to put on the accent. And hers was going all over the place in the actual musical. First it's French, then it's Russian, it's Icelandic, it's British, it's Swedish. It's when white people say that they're a mix of a bunch of European shit. This is what they mean. And her facial expressions were kind of subdued for a lot of the performance. I don't think she did badly by any means, but when everyone else is doing amazing, her good performance sticks out as the worst in my head. But even then, did Cheddar deserve bottom two for this episode? No, make it a top two. I hate watching queens be gaslit, and this is exactly what happened to Baby and LaPhil in this episode. Both of them did exactly what they had to do for their roles. Both of the songs that they get, they have like focus for like a single song, and they start slow. The song then gets bigger and picks up and picks up and crescendos. And so by that logic, their performances start a little smaller. And then as the song gets bigger, their performance gets bigger and bigger and crescendos. That's like how a crescendo works. There's levels. So when Michelle is critiquing both of them for, you kind of started off small. I'm like, yeah, girl, that's the point. <laughs> if they had started at a 10, you would have told them that their performance needed levels and that they were at the same spot the entire time. Like, oh, this was just... This is, for me, when the season really started going downhill. LaPhil's next level runway kept him out of the bottom, but it became clear to me that they really didn't give a shit about LaPhil or Baby when they put both of them in the bottom three. And I'm sure it was clear to both of them as well. Now, do I think if Baby didn't quit that this would have been a double Shantae? Rue was living for this entire performance, I would probably give Dakota the edge just a little bit, and all the queens did seem to have their eyes on Dakota for most of the lip sync, but like, come on, they both devoured. This was the double Shantae of the year of the seasons that I've seen. This one I think is the most double Shantae worthy. It just had that energy in the room that gives like double save vibes, but baby quits. 
before we can find out what would have happened, and then we move on to the Snatch Game. The only real riggery this episode was Dakota not being given a high spot. I mean, she could have won the whole thing, and I would have been like, yep. We also see, like, classic RuPaul asking these queens to do random-ass people for Snatch Game. She's like, I'm bored. Do share. I'm bored. Do this character I just made up in my head. And it's like, if Ru's just gonna ask them to, to do a certain character that she feels like seeing... What's the point of them spending all this time preparing their own characters if they're just going to have to throw them away because Rue wants to see them do something else? It's just, like, uh, it's annoying to me. And I feel like it mostly happens in UK. Like, it definitely happens in other seasons, but, like, Rue does it a lot in the UK. And part of me thinks it's because these queens are picking, like, UK British or, or Irish or whatever celebrities and RuPaul is, like, supposed to know everybody that's in the Snatch Game so that she can ask them questions pertaining to them and kind of, you know, feed off of them. And if RuPaul doesn't know half these British people, it kind of looks bad on her as a host. So that's just, like, my own little, like, theory. But it, it happens a lot. Like, here, she asked Jombers to be St. Patrick, but, like, make it a woman. And, like, Rue literally just made up that entire character out of thin air, and Jombers has to do it, because if she doesn't, think about last year, she asked River and Cherisa to switch, River and Cherisa don't switch, they both are on the bottom. And it always just makes me uncomfy when Rue wants the girls to do characters that kind of exemplify their ethnicity, or like their heritage. Like, Jombers here, she's like, be a leprechaun. Like, be literally the most stereotypical Irish thing imaginable. And every time you say, look at the Irish, or you're feeling lucky, or like, pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, I'm just gonna cackle because stereotypes are the funniest thing in the world. Like, that's what I got from this. Or like, when she asked Teresa to be Cher, because like, Teresa's accent and Cher's voice together is funny. And I'm like, the what? <laughs> Like, this is so, it's weird. It's weird. It's weird behavior, Rue. Please stop it. And even with Danny in this episode, like, Rue makes her second guess all of her choices, and Danny gets into her head. So then when Snatch Game comes, she does something completely different, something that she thinks Rue would want to see, and flops, when she probably would have done just fine with the choices that she had come with. But here are the breakdowns of Snatch Game. We got to see everyone answer two questions except Cheddar, who we got to see answer three, which is pretty standard for a winner. They get, usually get more screen time. But when it comes to laughs, Pixie actually got double the laughs that Danny got. I personally probably would have put Pixie as safe and Danny as low, but I don't think it was like riggery, riggery to put Pixie low. Neither of them were great. It kind of just drives the, like, Danny is better than Pixie storyline in deeper. I'm going to be completely honest. The only person who got a laugh out of me this entire Snatch Game was Dakota. Cheddar and Jomber's humor in this Snatch Game just, like, didn't, it didn't make me laugh. <laughs> it wasn't for me. But it's very clear to Rue, at least, that Cheddar was the funniest. Cheddar had the best runway by far of this episode. But, like, come on. Dakota... She did so well. They could have at least given her a top spot. And especially with her storyline of like, I'm nervous to do comedy. It's not really my thing, but I'm going to try. Like this would have been a great moment for her to get some payoff in that storyline. But I mean, Dakota already has two wins and um, I'm sure that she wasn't someone they wanted to see at the end. So maybe we just have to make it seem like she's doing worse in the competition than she really is just to kind of make her elimination more justified. You know what I'm saying? We'll get to that in a little bit, literally the next episode, but LaPhil goes home here, unfortunately. I wish we could have seen more of them. I feel like he honestly could be a good pull for like a versus the world season, even like a UK All-Stars. But we also now see Peppa fully, fully in her head. And this is where she's going to stay for the rest of the season. She goes into the Snatch Game saying she's going to do badly. This isn't her thing. She's not funny. And then she does badly. She's not funny. I just, <laughs> this is like, this is bad, bad. This is like top 10 worst Snatch Games. When she said, what does the X stand for in Lil Nas X? And she goes, how many X chromosomes I have? And Rue's like, oh? And then she goes, I went to a I went to a gay bar for the first time and they gave me water. I was like, what is happening? 
<laughs> it kind of gave me like Cynthia Lee Fontaine as Sophia Vergara just like saying like the first thing that pops into her head and we're just sitting there like I don't know what's going on anymore it, it was it was not good and it, it's sad to watch because you want to root for her but she has to root for herself too like Lil Nas X is actually a great snatch game choice and I hope someone else does him at some point but she just could not get the character to work at all Honestly, the season died with Baby's exit, and not just because of Baby's exit, but a lot of the second half of the season just feels lifeless. Like, Snatch Game should be like this huge moment, and the episode I was bored the entire time. But, like, looking at the storylines across the board, Cheddar and Danny are slaying. Period. That's not a storyline, that's just a fact. Dakota mm, has no storyline. At this point, no storyline. Peppa and Pixie don't believe in themselves, and because of that, they're struggling. Jombers does believe in herself, and because of that, she's slaying. LaFille, no storyline. Like, the only arcs that are happening have to do with the competition itself. Any story between Danny and Pixie is now basically non-existent, and all of these queens feel like they're in their own story rather than all of them together on the same cast. Drama is one way to craft stories, but even seasons without drama, we've seen some compelling story arcs that lead a season. And if there's no drama and no storylines to focus on, then we should be seeing like fun workroom stuff or like anything interesting. But the second half of the season felt like we were just running through the motions. Rue introduces the challenge. Rue gives the walkthroughs. The girls talk about something serious while they do their makeup. Challenge, runway, critique, lip sync, elimination, end. That is what the entire last couple of episodes was. And like, yeah, that's how every episode of the series works. But there's other stuff going on to break up the monotony. And this season had none of that. It was monotonous. And then when the makeover, oh my gosh, when the makeover episode happens, and there's finally something to break up the monotony by getting to know the women that, that are getting made over, it ends in one of the most rigged, heartbreaking eliminations of all time, leaving a sour taste in my mouth. Then the next two episodes, monotonous. This is not a good season. It's just, it's not. I might even put UK3 over it. At least it was dramatic and wild. At least if I was pissed about the riggery, I was still entertained. This season, I'm pissed about the riggery and I'm bored. Dakota had one of the best makeovers of this episode. She portrayed her drag style perfectly. She had adorable looks, made the necessary changes to her makeover partner's makeup and shape and all of these things to make them look the best that they could. This was a high placement makeover, 1000%. Her critiques were bullshit, but we all know that already. Like, I don't want to harp on it for too long, but Michelle telling her that we've seen this silhouette before. Yes, you have, Michelle, once. But there was never any talk or any issue about Danny wearing the same silhouette literally almost every single week. I don't have a problem with that either, since there was always some sort of you know, fun concept or some accent that set Danny's looks apart, despite the similar mid-length skirt look. But Dakota literally only wore a tight-fitted long dress with a slit in it that hit the floor once before this. She wore more like corset and panty looks than she did this look for the makeover. So it was like such a bullshit critique. They just wanted her to go home, which shows another big issue with Drag Race UK. If they don't see a queen in their top four going into the season, they're not going to let her get there despite how well they do in the actual competition. And that is so very apparent in Dakota Schiffer. Dakota came in as the quiet, vintage, understated fashion queen. And as you know, smaller personalities usually don't fare well on Drag Race. But Dakota broke the mold and allowed herself to come out of her shell in the challenges. Despite initially being nervous for comedic challenges, she did well in all of them. And despite being relatively new to drag, she held her own in performance challenges against some like seasoned professionals. She snagged two wins in the first three episodes and the world immediately fell in love with her. So when her challenge dominance continues in challenges like the Snatch Game and the Makeover, they couldn't allow her to get the praise for it or else it would ruin their initial top four dream. 
which was Peppa, Jombers, Danny, and Cheddar. Every decision made this season was made to ensure that the top four stayed intact. And queens like Baby, LaPhil, Dakota, Pixie all had to pay the price for it. I remember seeing the spoilers that Danny and Cheddar were going to be basically playing ping pong with wins after episode three, and I was worried maybe it would make the season feel stale or stagnant, and I was right. It's not that they didn't deserve all those wins, but I was almost like hoping for someone else to step in and snag one, like Dakota in the Snatch Game or Pixie in the Acting Challenge. Let's talk about Cheddar for a second. I feel like most people knew Cheddar coming into the season. I know I've followed her for a long time and was so excited to see what she was going to do on Drag Race. But I also was a little surprised, like Michelle said in the finale, that Cheddar would go on Drag Race. Not because she wouldn't do well, just because she felt bigger than Drag Race. But I kind of feel like the show didn't know what to do with Cheddar when it came to the edit, because she basically has no storyline whatsoever throughout the season. She's kind of a narrator, but so is Danny. She's the Sasha Velour of the season, giving us queer history during the Mirror Talks. She's winning challenges, but it doesn't come until episode 9 that Cheddar's main storyline really comes into fruition. She takes things very serious, and sometimes she just has to let go and have fun. But by episode 9, we already know Jombers is the lovable goofball. Peppa is fierce, but she's in her head. Danny is this, like, sensitive weirdo who's, like, slaying. For Cheddar to finally be characterized as the serious, smart one, it feels a little bit too late. And I kept asking myself throughout the season, why am I not as attached to Cheddar as I thought I would be? I mean, I obviously loved watching her. I thought she was fierce competition. But there wasn't that, like, attachment I felt for queens like Baby and Dakota and Danny and Pixie. And it was because we didn't get to see a peek behind the curtain into Cheddar until the very end of the season. It was the same way with Jombers. Everything, I feel like, just keeps going back to the producers and the editors failing at delivering us solid narratives for the queens on this season. After Dakota left... I honestly did not care at all anymore. <laughs> like, I loved Pixie, I loved Danny, I loved Cheddar, but I wasn't invested in the competition part of the season. This is a great example of if I didn't have this channel, if I wasn't covering this season, I would have stopped watching. I would have just looked to see, you know, the looks on Instagram, the placements on Instagram, the moments that, you know, went viral on Twitter, and that would have been it. Kind of like where I'm at with Dragula Titans right now. The acting challenge, like, Danny was the only one that was funny. I feel like the only reason they did not give Danny the win is because they knew that a roast was next, and Danny probably had the highest chance of winning that, for sure. So giving Danny five wins in nine episodes kind of makes things even more boring. But yeah, Cheddar was fine in this challenge, but in my opinion, Pixie and Danny were the top two. And giving Pixie a safe placement instead of a high placement here is just another way that I think they undermine her in the edit. She did a really good job in this challenge. She did a solid Kim Woodburn impression, but then Michelle tells her in the critique that she was just Kim Woodburn and you weren't Pixie. But, like, she's playing Kim Woodburn. <laughs> she's playing Kim Wood Woodburn. She's not playing Pixie. She's not playing herself in an acting challenge. She is a character. The character is a person. So she is playing that person. And, like, what's not clicking? What is not clicking, Michelle? If the Vivian came in and did Donald Trump in an acting challenge, they wouldn't be asking her for more Vivian. They would be saying, oh my God, your Donald Trump is great. You're amazing. You're perfect. It, it's just another weird, shitty critique used to justify making her safe instead of high. Like, if Pixie got a win here, that would have been breaking up the, you know, just Cheddar and Danny back and forth winning. It would have been something good for her storyline to get a win super late in the competition after she'd been doubting herself for so long. I don't know. Like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, how do I make this season better? Because it's not great. Peppa and Jombers lip sync. They're both saved. And it's like, why? Like, if either of them had been, like, killing the competition, I could kind of see it. But 
Peppa had been struggling for a while now, and she was just safe in the makeover, which was a challenge I thought she would have won. And John Burroughs had a couple solid weeks, but she was just low the week prior for the makeover, so she's kind of been, like, stumbling all of that momentum she gained. A double chante should be used because it was really just that close of a lip sync, or because you don't want to see either of these queens leave this soon. And in this case, neither of those were true. So we have another episode. At least this one is better. It's The Roast. No riggery, but I felt bad for Pixie, who kind of, like, gave up when she was in the bottom. But it's like, can you blame her? Like, after being critiqued negatively for the acting challenge, put in the low spot over Danny and Snatch Game, she was losing motivation in herself all season long. Because production was telling her, Danny is better than you. Like, Danny will always be better than you. That is basically what the storyline for Pixie was. And if I were her, I would feel like shit. <laughs> I would feel terrible. And um, let's move on. It's the finale. And this is where finales kind of feel weird to me. Last season, we had Crystal Versace win the season because of how hard she slayed that finale, despite not having the best track record. She, I think, had the worst track record. But this season, the two who slayed the finale, despite not having the best track record, neither of them took the win, and neither of them were even in the top two. So when does the finale actually matter, and when does your track record on the entire season actually matter? The lines are blurred, but the answer is really just production is going to pick whichever one they want to see win regardless. Like, Jombers completely ate up this finale. Her verse, her performance, her runway, her speech to herself in the main stage. Jombers owned the entire finale for me. So does that mean she deserves to win the season despite never winning a challenge, despite having a couple really bad weeks? Danny and Cheddar had all right performances, but they were outshined by Peppa and Jombers fully in this finale performance. But then the final two came down to them despite that. But do Cheddar and Danny deserve to not be in the top two despite slaying the entire season just because they got a little bit outshined in this finale? It's like, there's no right answer. I wish that they would just make the lines clearer, but why would they do that? I do think Cheddar and Danny were the right top two. Killing a finale is one thing, but these two killed the entire season, never having to lip sync, and both winning four challenges and then being in the top for multiple other ones. I do see why Danny won, though. She was my winner pick from pretty early on. Once I knew Dakota like wasn't making it there, Danny became my winner pick. And she showed us so much heart, so much soul this entire season. She showed us who she was down to her core. She led us inside. She took us along for the ride with her. She could have feasibly won six challenges, depending on your personal taste and, and who you ask, which is like crazy when there were only nine competitive episodes. Danny obliterated this entire season, with the Snatch Game being the only hiccup along the way. Like I said, I'm kind of holding back some thoughts, just like overall, so that I can discuss them in my UK breakdown video. I'll probably do how UK4 should have gone and then do the breakdown video so I have some time to like write the script and all of that. But this season, not my fave. I'm excited to like kind of break down all four seasons and kind of talk about why the first two worked, why the second two didn't, point out some of the bigger flaws of the second like seasons three and four and like compare and contrast it's gonna be a good time but yeah that is all we have for today i hope everyone in america had a wonderful thanksgiving and i hope everyone elsewhere had a wonderful random thursday we have some very fun things coming up that i cannot disclose yet but um expect some special guest stars on this channel coming very soon and thank you so much for 50k I cannot believe we got there. I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but there will be some kind of 50k like celebration video, whether you want to see like a uh, Q&A or like an AMA. Like, I don't know. I have asked you guys on Twitter and on Instagram for what you want to see. And I've been getting a lot of like, you know, weird things, lots of OnlyFans requests, which um, 
will not be happening. But if you have an idea for what you want to see for like a 50k celebration video, let me know. I want to do something really, really fun just as a thank you. And if you're not subscribed, well, you might as well join the party now. I would love to have you along for the ride. Here are the links to all of my social medias. Here is also my merch shop. The link is in the description below. We have a Cyber Monday deal that's kind of just going all week, 20% off literally your entire order. So if you're looking for like a birthday gift for someone or you want to get yourself a little treat, check out my merch. Make sure you're following me on all social medias. On Instagram right now, we're doing a UK tournament to figure out the ultimate queen of the UK. Twitter, you know I'm popping off all the time. And I know I have not been posting on TikTok, but I'm definitely going to be posting some new things soon on there. So go check out all of that. As always, thank you to my beautiful patrons. Thank you to everyone who watched. And I'm excited to talk about UK for a little bit longer before we dive right into season 15 because that is about to begin the preseason is about to start and you know this channel is going to be like season 15 central um so yes thank you guys so much for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one